My name is Sam Hansen, and I'm one of the evil henchmen here at the NHRL. <laughs> Our rules are cool because it's only one page long. Builders will build to the edge of the rules. Here, our edge is soft, so that means we don't know how far builders will take it. And I think that's what makes fighting robots at NHRL the coolest around. We have three weight categories here, the smallest being three pounds. Up from there, we have 12 pounders, and then the biggest ones we have are 30 pounds. The three 12 and 30 pounds are just the baseline. So we have weight bonuses available for our competitors. If, say, they have an unconventional drive system, we also allow for additional weight for multi-bots. They built these robots, these two robots, specifically for Norwalk Havoc. They are 19 pounds. That is not a weight class that exists anywhere else. The reason why they did that is because they exploited the weight bonus that is unique to Norwalk Havoc's rule set. A robot combat match at NHRL is a three minute bout. Your objective is to disable your opponent's robot. Competitors are guaranteed 20 minutes in between fights, which means they have to do all their repairs, swap their batteries, and get ready for the next fight within 20 minutes. Sometimes it's beneficial to tap out. If the writing's on the wall and you know that you're going to be destroyed, you can save your robot damage, which saves you time in the pits and money. The house bots at NHRL, they'll step in and separate robots that have become stuck together. If your opponent is unable to show controlled motion, the referee will initiate a 10 second countdown. After a 10 second countdown, then you've knocked them out. If you don't disable your opponent within three minutes, the judges will score you based on three categories, damage, control, and aggression. We're gonna need the judges to take us through this because I'm, I'm frankly, I'm surprised it's unanimous. Let's start here with Dominic. My name is Dominic Kinkaskis and I'm a judge here at NHRL. Okay, that was good, but that was slightly terrifying. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how to be other than me. I'm a judge here at NHRL. Based on my experience with BattleBots and all the prior competitions that I've been to and won, I've won multiple events and I was on BattleBots for two seasons. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a judge's job at NHRL is to watch the whole match and if it goes the full three minutes, we have to decide who wins. The judging's a little different in NHRL. Everything is so fast paced and there's not a lot of downtime. Oh! You're in the zone watching every fight you're looking for every contact point or every time opponent runs away or every time just anything happens you have to pay attention to each one because sometimes bots have to run away to respin up their weapon or get their bearings if you will maybe if their bots flipping around or they're upside down and they got to figure out which way they're going but if you keep doing that over and over and over during the match it is going to eventually start to lose points and control because you're spending more time running away rather than acting interacting with a bot. It's always good to see the Yankaskis family out here. They always put out really great performances. It's just amazing the workload that that family can put out when they when they get into these competitions. I want to get on BattleBots because I can defeat men. <laughs> <laughs> To impress me in a fight, you know, I look for heavy damage, eliminate a subsystem, or cause significant structural damage to the point where they can no longer drive correctly or operate their weapon. Great control, we're looking for the robot who is dictating the flow of the match. One of the best matches we've seen today. I have no idea who won this fight. Honestly, this was a 50-50 split. Control and aggression go hand in hand together. Aggression is when you're using your weapon, you want to damage them, preferably. Otherwise, you'll score less aggression points. A non-working weapon can still show aggression. For damage and control, we score up to six points each, and aggression is up to five points. One big hit isn't going to necessarily win it for you, and unless that hit just blew apart the robot. But at the same time, well, most of those, it doesn't go to the judges anyways. Into its corner, not great. Oh my God! Yes! Wow! The winner we is did it again! Wow! Robots are required to have an active weapon. So whether that's a flipper, a lifter, a hammer, a beater bar, a vertical spinner, a horizontal spinner, a drum. <laughs> My list was a bit long there. But it can't just be a rammer or a wedge. Some of the weapons we don't allow here 
our liquid being expelled from the robot. We also don't allow entanglement devices. When a robot is not in the arena, it's made safe through its weapon lock and by being turned off. A weapon lock is like a physical jam. So if you have a spinning blade, it's a bar through the spinning blade. And if you have a flamethrower, it's something that'll stop the gases from coming out. We can have flame-based weapons at NHRL. Our arena is fireproof. It has a negative pressure system that can suck all the air out so that flames have no fuel. And at our facility, we have a multitude of safety checking arenas. So no robot is gonna be turned on unless they're in a polycarbonate cage. Prior to the start of a tournament, each robot's gonna have to pass safety. They get weighed in and they get a functionality test, showing they can remotely operate their robot. And beyond that, showing that when they don't have radio signal, the robot stops. The cage or arena here is double-paned polycarbonate. If the first inner layer doesn't stop a weapon, the outer layer certainly will. The double pane design actually came into effect where Depth Charge was going up against James. His weapon hit the wall and actually cracked off a piece of the inner layer and didn't even scratch the outer layer. Each one of these panels is like nearly bulletproof. Yeah and it was able to make it through that first one. Everyone was safe in the audience all the way through. Wow. Now look at that, they love it. They love the carnage. My biggest thing is worrying about protecting this audience. So we made this totally, the design is set on a quick change out for the glass. And it's to be installed so that it protects the audience. We have a half inch still protecting the audience. We lost the inner sheet, which is a 3 8 inch. We have a one inch air gap. So if it comes through, there's all this energy peaking out of the first one. We got the air gap. We got rubber in there to take some of the hit. And we still have another half inch. I think what differentiates NHRL, they're much more open to innovative ideas. And the coolest part about it is you can have your seasoned veterans competing right alongside a, a person that this is their first time and they just heard about combat robotics a week ago and threw something together. And there's no limitation of what your background is, who you are, or where you came from. It's a necessity to be well prepared if you want to win at NHRL.